Kriege, Katastrophen, Krisen. Immer häufiger dokumentieren Amateurvideos wie diese das Weltgeschehen. As you look at YouTube, there's 300 hours of video uploaded to YouTube every minute alone. Mangels unabhängiger Quellen müssen Redaktionen die Handyvideos oft mit diesem Hinweis versehen. Im neuen Hafenviertel von Dublin haben sich eine Menge Hightech-Giganten niedergelassen. Ein wenig abseits hat die Redaktion von Storyful ihren Sitz. Eine Nachrichtenagentur für sogenannte nutzergenerierte Inhalte. So what you're seeing there is a huge volume of, of content. What our journalists are trying to do day in, day out is make sense of that noise. We have a team of about 40 journalists. We're monitoring the globe 24 hours a day, seven days a week. What we're trying to do is find user-generated content of breaking news events. And what we then do is go through a very systematic process of verifying that. There are three things we are primarily trying to figure out about any one video. We want the original source, we want to verify the location, and we want to verify the date. Um, to do that, I'll just take this example from yesterday. So this is a YouTube video. Uh, it's got it's in Arabic. Our Arabic speaker uh, Lobna over in the corner. She uh, was able to track down this group. It's a charity group. Its account history is all Aleppo-based content, so everything they upload is from Aleppo. There's no other versions of this video uh, prior to this uh, upload online. So this is the first version of this video to appear anywhere. It was shared on their Facebook profile. It was shared on their Twitter account. So all that evidence and all that information points to this being the original source of the footage. Every day we see people repurposing content. So they may publish content saying it's from uh, Gaza, it's actually from Syria two years ago. The date is often very tricky. What we can do is we can look to other activists on the scene. If 20, 30 images and videos are shared from the same position at the same time, uploaded at the same time, we know that this event is taking place at a specific time on a specific day. The location is given as the Hajj roundabout in Aleppo. So we have a location name given to us by the video uploader. We're going to, using that um, location name, go to satellite imagery and see by comparing visual elements of the video, such as you know this very visible bridge here, any other visible elements we can get. We see here also a water tower and a minaret in the background. So we've three distinctive visual elements. Using those three as distinctive visual elements, we're going to try and match them to satellite imagery. So to do that, um, we go to our Google Maps. Now we see here Hajj roundabout, which immediately we see some matching. We see this uh, bridge crossing over the roundabout. But if we look closer, and if I zoom in here a little bit, we can also see a water tower casting a shadow. So judging by the shadow, we know that this is a relatively high structure and you know it matches the shape of the water tower. And if we look back here, just about 50 to 75 meters, we see a mosque and a minaret. So our three elements are there. We have the bridge, we have the water tower casting the shadow, and we have the minaret just behind the water tower. And those three distinctive elements uh, make us absolutely certain that this is our location. You put date, source, location together, having done digital footprint analysis, forensic, frame by frame analysis, and found corroborating sources, you then have a story. Social media, all of the content, it's just a piece of information. What you have to do to it is journalism. So add all of the, the context, all the layers of data, of narrative, of interviewing someone and building out the full story arc. You still need that. We talk all the time about content being king, but content is nothing without a story and context. So this is an incredibly exciting time for journalism and journalists, and we just have to grasp hold of it and make sense of it. Eine Herausforderung für jede Nachrichtenredaktion. Denn auch der richtige Umgang mit Fälschungen oder gezielter Desinformation gehört zum Journalistenalltag.